everyone. Today we are going to be learning about inertia and Newton's second law using something called an inertial balance. So this object right here is made of a couple of parts. You can see it basically has two trays and they're connected by this sort of springy metal. And using this tool right here, which is called a C-clamp, they can basically be clamped down onto a table. Um, when you are clamping them, please be careful. Uh, you'll notice that the part here is sort of a box. If you clamp from the top of the box down and there's nothing underneath it, you'll break them. So please make sure that you always have flat plastic against the table when you are uh, clamping these down. So using the C-clamp, you're going to attach this onto your table and you will do so so that there is a sort of cup with these three holes in it facing up. Basically, you want this to be a nice tray that you can stick objects inside of. Now, inertia is an object's tendency to resist accelerating. And what this object is, is basically a machine that causes lots of acceleration. If I pull back on one side, this is basically gonna serve as a spring and it's gonna accelerate this object forward once it reaches past the halfway point, it'll start to slow down. Remember, slowing down is a type of acceleration. And then it'll reach the end and it'll change direction and speed up again. So this is speeding up, it's slowing down, it's changing direction. All three of those are acceleration. So this object is basically in a constant state of acceleration. And you can see it sort of swinging back and forth. Now, inertia is an object's tendency to resist accelerating. It's basically how hard it is to make something speed up. And what you will notice is that if we stick more mass in here, so here I'm just gonna add in some extra weights, with more mass in the balance, it slows down. So this is moving quite slowly. If I reduce it to just one object, you see it moves much faster. Now, what you'll have are a couple of things. So first off, you have these weights. These are your mystery weights. I'm not gonna tell you how heavy these are. The objective of this assignment is for you to figure out the mass of these objects. The second thing that you have are these weights. So we've got these balance cubes. I've got a couple of different kinds of weights and these have written on them their mass. So this one is 270 grams. This one is 90 grams. This one is 350 grams and so on. So these are labeled. You can tell how heavy they are. What we can do is we can basically attach these, your known masses, into your inertial balance. To do that, you will need to use a piece of scotch tape. Otherwise, they'll just fly out of, uh, out of there and it won't work. So you'll each have a piece of scotch tape. You want to really firmly tape them down like so. Lots of contact there. And what you're going to do is you are going to use a stopwatch. You could also use the timer app on an iPad to measure how long it takes this object to oscillate. That means go forwards and then back to the original position 20 times. The reason why you're measuring it 20 times is because then you get a really good sense of how long it is. Um, without timer error. Basically, the time it takes you to start and stop that timer is only happening once spread across all 20 swings instead of across a single swing. So I'm gonna pull this back. When I release, I'm gonna start my, my timer. I'm gonna to count to 20 and see how long that takes. Ready and go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And that took 7.75 seconds for these, this object that had a mass of 270 grams. You're gonna do this for as many different objects as you can. So you'll measure the 270 gram object, um, the 350, the 90. You could even put multiples in. I could you know, combine my 270 with my 350 and then I'd have uh, 620 grams so I can get heavy masses. Um, so get as many different measurements as you can. And what we're gonna do is because there is this direct correlation between mass 
and inertia, remember force equals mass times acceleration, we're gonna actually be able to calculate the mass of this unknown object. And we might get it really close to the actual mass. So that is your goal for this lab.